What do you say we get back to work on the filing vise, and with any luck, we will not only complete this filing vise, but we will complete our other two theoretically simpler versions as well, since we're making progress on all three. As I mentioned in the last video, I just don't like the way I did this lug on the back. I just think it looks too much like just a tacked on bolt, which is what it is. I thought it would look a little bit different, but it doesn't. So I'm going to take that off, I'm going to take the spring out, and I'm going to make a new lug for the back. And it's going to be very similar in concept, except I'm going to forge a bolt that's as wide as this is, but not as tall. So it'll be a rectangular bolt to make this lug, and we'll thread it and we'll put it in there. To do that, I'm going to start with a piece of 3 quarter inch square bar, forge a tenon on the end, round it up, and then we'll thread that, cut it all off. Actually, we'll cut it off and then thread it. But uh, we'll follow through with that at the forge. First, I'm going to take the spring out so we can get it hot. thought I might be able to grab that and just twist it out with a pair of vice grips, but it is just not enough head there to do that. So I'm going to center punch it as close to center as I can possibly get. This is where putting a machine screw that's threaded comes in handy. But ideally you never have to take this apart so the rivet's not that bad an idea. use a little easy out here. Just drill this all the way out and probably manage to pull this out of here, but I just thought I'd see if this would uh, make my life any any easier with the easy out and just twist it until it comes out. And I got, uh, got most of the head to break off. It looks like the, the rivet is still mostly in there. But not too bad. Let's see if that's deep enough to do the same thing a second time. If I need to, I could actually go to a bigger rivet. That looks like it'll be just fine. So we've got that done. Let's take the ugly bolt off of here. And then let's go to the forge and make a new bolt that will end up being full width of this and not as tall. So I've got a 3 quarter inch square bar and I'm just going to butcher off a little bit for a tenon. You don't really need a whole lot, it's going to stretch quite a bit. And the guillotine tool is the ideal place for this. We're going to make one of these pretty soon. You don't want to go too deep, but you want to be close to that 5 16 bolt size. And I'm doing the corners too, since this is going to be round eventually. Take another heat and go a little deeper. That's getting much closer. I'm going to reduce the fat spot. Try not to hit your shoulder or the shoulder of the tenon. This will end up much longer than it needs to be. I'm going to go back to the guillotine tool with some tenoning dies and get that down to exact size. It's pretty typical to have way more than you need when you're making tenons. I'm going to cut that off just a little short than the three quarters I want 
in the long run because I'm sure I've got plenty of material. And again, these are just guillotine tool dies that do a very nice job. And we're going to look at these dies in more detail when we make a guillotine tool in the near future. It goes faster if you're not trying to move excess material. Square, then octagon, and then round just like any other drawing out process. And this will probably take a little filing to get it nice and smooth since this is not a round die. You could certainly make a round tenoning die, but you can see that's getting pretty darn close. I've got a heading plate with a 5 16 hole that I'm going to compare. Right now that doesn't even go in the 3 8 hole, so I know I've got to go further. I'm going to go ahead and taper the end of this a little bit more radically because it's going to get cut off again. I only need three quarters of an inch of shank right through there. And it just so happens my Smithy Magician dies are three quarter inches wide. So anything that sticks out this side doesn't really have to be full size, I can taper it and just get it out of my way. It's getting real close. I'm going to go ahead and cut that off and we'll finish that up by driving it into the heading plate and that should give us our final size for it. I probably don't want any more than about a half inch thick lug, but I'm going to do a little upsetting here, so I'm going to go for about five eighths long. And then we'll fix it. We'll put that in the heading plate and drive it down. Now if you're actually forging a bolt, you might want to bevel the edges of this, but this isn't actually a, a bolt for conventional purposes. I'm going to straighten that up a little bit. It's just a hair crooked. The other thing I'm going to do is flatten this just a little so that it's rectangular instead of square because I really want it to be one inch wide to match our filing vise. should uh, make a much nicer looking lug on the back of the vise. Get 
that another pass in the heading plate. Anything else we need to do to this, we can probably do with a file at this point. Just make sure it's all straight and square. And we're going to let that cool. While I'm waiting for that lug or bolt, whatever you want to call it, to cool, by the way, if you just need to make a custom bolt for something, pretty much the exact same procedure. We still have to put the threads on it. You'll need a a tap and die set to do that, but you could also just rivet this into the filing vise if you wanted to. Just peen that uh, tenon over. But I'm going to go ahead and thread it because I've already got threaded holes in here. But anyways, while I'm waiting for that to cool, I'm going to go weld the pivot point into our fabricated version of the filing vise. So this is three pieces of one inch round bar. I cut two quarter inch pieces and a half inch and the two quarter inch pieces will weld to one side and the half inch will weld to the other. That's very important to not accidentally weld all three pieces to the same side or weld the pieces together because then you've just created a fixed point and not a pivot point. So I'm going to put this quarter inch spacer in there and a sample piece of some eighth inch because that's what I usually file in these and I'm going to slide that down until everything is tight in here and the eighth inch is held solid. And I'm going to carry this line across and create, cut that off and that way this is all going to be the, the right size and I don't need to do any reforging there. Then my hinge point is loosely bolted together so that it will spin freely after I weld it and then I'll weld that in. Now remember, I am a blacksmith. I am not a welder. So these are going to take a little bit of grinding to clean up and get any irregularities off so it all goes back together. And I'm going to go do that next. While I was over there, remember the ones that we did a twisted um, end on so that just kind of like we did the twisted tongs, I, I had fullered in here and then given it a 90 degree twist to form the boss. And we didn't actually show this this is just was my first experiment and I wasn't real happy with it because it had a little cold shut at the edges of the twist. So I went ahead and welded ground down to the bottom of the cold shut and welded that in and I'm going to grind that too. That seemed like an easier way but I really think this other forged method that we've been concentrating on ended up being just as simple and it is coming out much better. Well here's our trio of filing vices. The lug is ready to work on. It's cooled down now so we can get back to that. The, this one still needs to be cut off here. And a lot of these things I'm not showing because they're, they're all the same for each one. This is the fabricated one and it's all been welded up. And it, like I say I'm not the, uh, the best welder. I might go back and try and fill in some of the little voids right there. But I might not. We'll see. But it works just fine. And that is a little faster than forging the, the boss. And if you're a good welder, you can do this and you'll never be able to tell. You'll just have to be honest with people that you welded it. And this is the twisted one. And it had the cold shuts welded up, so I'm much happier with the way it looks now. And it's going to work just fine. And that rivet needs to be set. And again, I'll do that off camera. But back to this one. We need to trim this to length, cut threads on it, and then shape this the way we want it. That's uh, large enough that we have plenty of material to make this work. Now I know I want that just this long, so I'm going to mark that. Just take a hacksaw and cut it off. Then I want to clean that up with a file just a little bit. I don't want to make it too small, but I want to get the scale off before I take my tap and die to it. As you file something like this, it's handy to have one of these drill gauges 
just to test and see if that goes over. And it really doesn't. It's still about a 64th over. So I might as well file that down to the proper size before I try and cut the threads. Life will be much easier. Yeah, it fits all the way down now. We're going to thread this to 5 sixteenths to match our hole that we already put in the other piece of the filing vise. And that's all we need to do to that. So let's put this at the back of the filing vise. And it's somewhat tempting to put Loctite on this, but I'm actually going to heat it up again, and I think that would be a waste of my time to have put Loctite on it. Now, of course, this is going to go tight in between. Hopefully you don't shear the threads off. That's pretty good. Now because that's a little uneven, it lines up on this side but not this one. So I'll go trim that off. And then we're going to get the whole thing hot. It's not bad. This is way better than our previous lug. I like the way it looks a lot better already. But I think we can do just a little bit better and get that to fit right in here. And then we'll just make the whole thing look good. Now I don't want to take a chance on messing up the jaws or the joint, so I'm going to quench this. One advantage of making things like this out of mild steel is you can get away with quenching them. But I want to leave that lug good and hot. Don't get me wrong, the rest of this is way too hot to touch still. I'm going to try and get a good grip with the tongs. There we go. I'm going to come over to the horn. I just want to set that lug down so that the top of it seals up with the, the top edge here. Put this in the vise just like we would use it, but don't clamp it tight because you'll end up bending something. Now just not rounding the top corner of that lug off is all I'm doing and trying to get it to fit fairly snug there. I think we're in pretty good shape at this point. Hopefully I haven't straighten that jaw out too much. Although it looks like I have. I was afraid that might happen. So I'm going to have to, to go back and bend that just a little bit. I don't want to clamp the both jaws in the vise for this because I'll end up messing up the other one. We just want to get this one back on track. Go slow and take multiple heats or we'll end up having to straighten it back out after we're done. That looks much better. Right back in business. The very last thing I'm going to do is take the inside of that threaded bolt for the lug and I'm just going to put a couple of center punch marks in it and this just makes it spread just a little bit and pretty much guarantees it can't ever come out. So it is permanent now.
and I want to put my touch mark on put my touch mark on this outer jaw here's our completed lug I'm much happier with this one than I was the little bolt idea so we're gonna stick with that the next thing I would like to do with this before I put the spring in is put a little bevel on the outside and that's so if your vice jaws don't clamp perfectly parallel and that's pretty common in an old post vise that it isn't concentrating the force on one corner or another it'll help move it into the middle so that the filing vise clamps more solidly I'm just going to clamp that up in the vise like that and this bevel only needs to be as long this way as your vise jaws are thick so a file width is more than enough anything more is just because you like a bigger, longer bevel. You can also round that up if you'd rather, so that there's just a high spot at the back. But I think this will work. Okay, we're ready to put the spring back in there. Oh, no we're not. I'm going to go blacken it to uh, color match the bevel. This is really just a matter of bringing it up to a dull red so that it oxidizes and scales like the rest of the piece. Give it a wire brush for one more time. Then let that cool to a black heat so I can put some wax on it and it won't smoke too bad. Just burning the wax off doesn't do you any good. So that's going to cool for about 10 minutes, then we'll wax it. So as usual, while that cools, we're going to go on and do something else. This is the one with the 90 degree twist style of boss. And I'm going to do a completely different lug without adding a piece onto it. So I'm going to clamp that in the vise right where it should clamp to work. Make sure it's squared up. Then I'm just going to take a hacksaw and cut a 45 degree notch right at the top of the vise. I'm going to go in, oh, what is that, about three-eighths of an inch down each side, probably only about a quarter of an inch from the, um, the corner there. And that just gives me something that's going to want to move right there. It gives me a plane of weakness that I can work with. This is still way too hot to touch but not too hot to wax. Put a rag under there it'll keep me from getting wax all over my anvil that'll smoke and stink later. I'm just melting beeswax in. I usually use Johnson's paste wax for stuff but had the beeswax handy so that's what I decided to use and then wipe the excess off the idea isn't to make it waxy and slippery but that'll help protect it from rust and just makes it a nicer more finished looking tool that's about as much smoke as you want if it smokes more than that you're definitely too hot this would probably have been okay if it was a bit cooler so Time for the spring. I think I mean it this time. So now, on the side above where the vise will be, I'm just going to push that little ear out to make my lug. Do that on both sides. And this won't be as big a lug, but it should be functional.
Trying to keep the rivet down there in the hardy hole. Now if you want to have a little fun, you can make these eyeballs and put uh, some sort of a mouth in here or something. Make some sort of fantasy creature out of the thing. I think that's going to do just fine. I sure hope I haven't confused anybody too badly by jumping from one version of the filing vise to the other. But sometimes that's just the way you have to work to stay productive while things cool or you wait for some other part of the process to occur. Although I do uh, did find my eighth inch rivet set so we can at least set that rivet that way this time. And that is now, as far as I can tell, all of the assembly work completed. There's just one little thing that has to be done. I'll talk about that in just a minute. So there is our completed filing vise. The spring opens it and closes it along with the, the post vise, so it's working just the way it's supposed to. The only other thing that needs to happen is that these two jaws don't come together quite flush all the way across. And we're going to have to make those fit. That's not a, not a big deal, it just takes a little, little more attention to detail. But we're not actually going to show that today. So if you want to see that little trick, you're going to have to come back and watch the fourth and I'm pretty darn sure the final installment of making the filing vise. We've got this one, it's usable the way it is, but just that little bit of a cleanup will make it a better filing vise. We have the completely fabricated version that still needs a spring and it'll still need to have the ends cleaned up. Or I shouldn't say completely, the mostly fabricated because we did forge the arms. And we have the one that we just did the little lug on that looked like eyeballs. And it still needs a fair amount of cleaning up at the end. So we're going to have to address all of this. Some of these things I will do, that one's still too hot to hold on to very long. Some of these things I will do um, between now and the next video on the subject. I will get them all so they are just nearly completed and probably just do the jaws on one. So it will be a very short video and I will talk about all three of these approaches and what I would do for the next one as well as another idea that's out there on the internet that some people have mentioned. But you're going to have to, to come back and you're going to have to watch it because we'll cover all that in the fourth video and we'll wrap up this bunch of filing vices but I already have an idea for the next one I'm going to do, so we'll talk about that a little bit too. But we won't start forging it for a few weeks or a month or something. We'll let this settle and then we'll start fresh. I really do hope that you have enjoyed this process. It's been a lot of fun. It was a little bit more fussy and fiddly than I thought it would be. But overall, I am extremely pleased with what we've come out with. All three of these are going to be completely functional tools. They're going to be good looking tools, tools we can be proud of, and they all have their slight advantages or disadvantages as far as the construction method goes. I really do appreciate all of the support and the participation that I get from all of the viewers, whether it's just watching the video, commenting on the video, liking, subscribing, whatever it is you're doing to support the channel and be an active part of this it's all very much appreciated. If you'd like to take a little bit more active role and actually support the channel to some financial degree to help offset the time and the cost in making tools like this, there is a link down in the description for PayPal and another one for Patreon and you can leave donations through either one of those sources, but they're simply a donation. There is no expectation, no obligation. The content remains free and I intend to keep the content free for as long as I'm doing this. So I love it if you hit, hit the subscribe button. Love it if you give it a thumbs up. Feel free to share the videos with your friends if you'd like to. Share it on your social media if you feel it's appropriate. Do take some time. Get out to your shop. Make something. Challenge yourself. Make some of your own tools that you've never thought you'd make before. But do stay safe. Do wear your safety glasses, and we will see you for the next one. Thanks. Good night.